Welcome to the Blackhawks Talk Podcast, sponsored by St. Xavier University. We're in the virtual podcast studio, powered by PointsBet. Charlie is at the NHL Combine in Buffalo, and look who is with us. Darren Robert <laughs> Pang, the original host of Bop Talk. Panger, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. Thanks for the nice introduction. It's uh, nice to hear your voice, and we go back... Uh, we will go back many, many years. So it's uh, it's incredible this uh, this turnaround and going to the place that I started. The, the Hawk Talk with Darren Pang. That's uh, that's a memory a long time ago. But you know what? It's an important memory because it's what uh, you know what I I learned how to kind of uh, take care of things other than just being behind a microphone. I mean, had to do interviews, had to go in the locker room, had to think of things, had to write them down, had to make an intro. So. I, all those things have greatly benefited me over the years, and I, I really honestly can't believe I'm back. It has to be an emotional time for you, Panger. I mean, you look at you have so many roots here in Chicago as a player, and then when you're where you started your broadcasting career, but you're leaving a place and a team that you love deeply too, and a fan base that is passionate about you. So, how have you navigated through the emotions over the last, let's say, few days as you made this decision? There's no question that this is, you know, d- listen, decisions are hard. We, you know, whenever we have to make a decision, whether we're, you know, t- t- telling our kids, no, they can't have that or they can't do that or those are hard decisions. You want to say yes to everybody. And 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 certainly this has been a really emotional time. It's It's been full of um, excitement and then it's been full of anxiety and then it's been full of tears. And, you know, so, yeah, I'm, I, go, I go through my phone and I'm like, Oh my goodness, you know, oh my goodness. And, you know, so I think I'm very grateful that I, that I had such a great time there, 14 years, um, part of their only Stanley Cup championship as a broadcaster. And you guys all know what it's like. It's, it's about being on a team. It's developing that chemistry. And when I joined St. Louis 14 years ago, I called it a leap of faith. And, uh, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a huge music fan and a Bruce Springsteen fan, but that's, uh, that's kind of part of the letter that I wrote to the Blues fans was it was a leap of faith there. And, and then all of a sudden, 14 years go by and, and you, you gain great friends like in any, any job. But I think our job is different. Like when, we, when we're on the road and you're having dinner and you're goofing around and, and I, I do that plenty, plenty. And then next thing you know, you know you're, you're in the game and you've got to come up with this and that and the energy. And then you get on the media bus and you goof around again. And I get the music going. And so, yeah, there's a lot of great. Obviously, there'll be friends forever in my life. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to a new chapter. And gaining new friends and and doing it again i got lots of energy for this so uh look out <laughs> i don't plan on slowing down anytime soon love to hear it panger when you found out the blackhawks were interested in wanting to bring you on what was your reaction to that did you get goosebumps were you like holy cow like what you know what went through your mind when you found out yeah well i mean number one the season was still going on uh when uh, when jamie uh, called over to uh, the Blues president, Chris Zimmerman, just to say that they'd be interested in having a conversation. Does it end right here, or would we be able to at least have that conversation with, with Panger? And and so um, at that point, I actually told my agent, Dan O'Connor, I said, Dan, I, I really don't want to know anything. Um, I just want to you know do my work. I'm in a really busy schedule right now, and I've got two two granddaughters that are under the age of four in, in St. Louis, and I got a third one that just came two weeks ago in New Jersey. That makes five total. And I just had a lot of things, and, and besides a lot of games. So then, when everything settled, when the season ended, and and Dan, you know, really explained to me, um, this is very, very serious. Um, it was it was quite quite excited, and it was quite difficult to keep things inside. To be honest with you, it's hard to bottle something up um, when it you know it, it could lead to uh, to rejoining a team and and going to the city that I I started my career in, uh, both on the ice and off the ice. And my both my kids were born there, so. Yeah, it's something else. And it's something else getting the kind of texts that I get from people that I haven't heard from for a while that are in Chicago. I haven't changed my number in a lot of years. So uh, it's it's great to hear from from everybody and, and just how excited everybody is uh, for this opportunity. Well, you talk about uh, joining a team, and that, that's what the broadcast uh, team is all about. It's, it's not unlike the teams you played with when you were in your professional hockey career. You had conversations with with some some former teammates of ours, current teammates now in Troy Murray, Eddie Olchek. What were those conversations like, and and how did that how did that go as far as helping you feel like this was the right move for you? 
Yeah, well, number one, and, and the first priority for me was to, to call Troy. Um, you know, knowing that, uh, number one, health-wise, you know, that, I mean, Troy and I are very close, and um, and what he's gone through has just been, you know, just incredible that he's even, you know, put together the strength to get in the TV booth last year was just amazing. And every time I watched the game, I'd send him a text, tell him, sound great, Mize, you know, keep her going, big guy. And and so, but the first thing was, is, you know, the change. Like, am I, am I coming in and taking somebody's position, which I'm not real fond of, to be quite honest with you. Um, and and so anyway, Troy was really excited. I said, we're on the down low, not even sure if this is happening, but before I go any further, I just want to make sure it was okay with you, pal. And he said it was great. And he was pretty darn excited about it too. So, and Eddie Olchek, Edzo gave me some great advice as well. I mean, man, a mainstay for a long period of time and, and uh, um, just everything, just really about about the people, about the broadcast, about where they were heading just prior to to when he left, and and so I mean, he, friend, it's friend, it's interesting, isn't it? Like the friends you talk to them, and and uh, you know, I know it was tough on Eddie, I know it was tough on everybody there in in Chicago, but yet when you sit down and you talk to a friend and you just ask for a little advice of this and that, and and you just you just get it straight, and and that's what I really appreciated. I had one more guy called me, and that was Pat Foley. And so, you know, like, I mean, Pat reached out. I was driving to Michigan to my summer lake house, and uh, Pat's, Pat and I must have talked for an hour. And so um, and then I was kind of, you know, I've was, I was taken all the information, then I was keeping everything kind of inside and thinking about pros and cons and this and that. And, and then I sent, uh, I sent uh, Pat a text, um, and I said, boy, that, that talk was really influential, Pat. I'm going back to Chicago. And he was, uh, yeah, he was quite excited. Well, it was great you had that conversation with Foley. We got to get him back on the golf course. I know he's uh, he's been uh, on injured reserve a little bit this summer. But uh, when you had that influential conversation with him, was there one thing he said that, that stuck out that said, all right, th- this is something that I should embark on? You know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't one of those talks where he was, he was trying to sell me one of his, uh, his parents' old Buicks, you know? Um, <laughs> It was, uh, you know, but he, I mean, really what he, what he wanted to do was just, just talk to me about it and talk to me about, you know, I mean, I mean, number one, um, just again, going back to the market, returning back home, um, you know, how much he actually, how much he's enjoying what he's doing right now, which, you know, he had such a great run and he's, and he's, uh, you know, just kind of enjoying life right now. We talk a lot about golf. We talk about a lot of kids and stuff like that. So uh, on the broadcast part, no, he, he said some several really nice things about Chris um, that I've, you know, I've never worked with before. Um, but I mean, that's just, that's just part of growing as a team. I never worked with John Kelly before either. And we went, you know, you go 14 years and you can tell when a guy's going to take a breath. So, um, <laughs> you know, that was one of the things he was, you know, he feels like he says like Chris, a hardworking guy, he really, you know, loves the game and, and uh, he, he just said, you'll be perfect for him, too, as a partner. And with all the experience that you have and, and, and having many partners that I've had is, is probably really important to, to when you're blending in with somebody else. So, no, it was all really good. And it was great hearing from Pat. And, and uh, since that time, I've heard from a number of the of alumni. And, and uh, that, that's made it, honestly, really special. And uh, I, I know this transition is going to go really well. That, that was going to be my follow-up question. You've worked with so many different play-by-play announcers so I'm sure that it's not going to be anything new to you to kind of uh, get familiar with a new broadcaster but what are you looking forward to working with Chris who's a young up-and-comer uh, in the NHL yeah well I'll probably have to get some kind of milk milk crate to stand on first of all. <laughs> number number one thing I was thinking about to be quite honest with you he's a he's a tall sucker that guy um, and so but but overall you know throughout my career whether I was at at ESPN or ESPN two. And I remember working with a young Kenny Albert, I, you know, and doing a game with, with Kenny and then, you know, Mike Goldberg uh, would jump in. And then, you know, uh, then I was a partner with Dave Strader after Tom Mees uh, had passed away. And then Steve Levy was a partner and I go down the list and uh, Kurt Keelback for a couple of seasons, then Dave Strader in Phoenix and then John Kelly. But then I, you know, Brendan Burke right now is a partner of mine. I never worked much with Brendan, maybe one game, and I think it was on radio before we, you know, got together on TNT. So, you know, and, and that's, I think to me, that's the exciting part. I think part of being a teammate is, is finding out what makes the other guy click and makes him comfortable. And, 
Um, and then, you know, once you're doing the game, you know, to make sure that we just have the, you know, have the best call, have the best game, bring some, bring some thoughtful energy to the game and, and, uh, and leave the show and, uh, tip a cold one and say, that was great, you know, great work. Or if it wasn't great, well, we'll get better the next time. We got a few things to work on, but, um, but, but for Chris, I, he's got a wonderful voice. He really, he's got a great, I don't know if this is the right word, but the way you can carry it in a little crescendo to the development of the play and, and uh, I know uh, I know we're going to have a, a great time here, and and uh, you know it it and I don't want to tell people it doesn't take long. It it takes a little bit of time, and I, I'm looking forward to doing that and, and getting to know him and uh, and getting to be part of it here. Well, he's got a great sense of humor, Panger, and and that's where I think you guys are going to absolutely find a sweet spot because you you like to have fun yourself. You've done a lot of that between the benches in recent years, has there been dialogue, whether you're going to be more in the booth with Foster's or will you do some games where he's up top and you're between the benches? Yeah, that, that such preliminary talk with uh, Trevor Bray and, and haven't even, even gone that far uh, down the line, but I, I think, you know, originally, and I did this with John Kelly is I started up beside him um, and then eventually morphed down to a kind of a one up one down scenario. Um, that so it's really whatever everybody feels is the best to start things off. I mean, I'm I've obviously done many games upstairs and I've done many down below. There are times during the season that if if you do have one up, one down, and and it's a really big game and 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 you know you need that feel from the bench or that's where I, I mean that's where I like to go and that's where I like to be. Um, and it's easy to jump over and do an interview with somebody and. You know, I think fans get to feel that part of the game. Um, and for me, it kind of, especially if you're doing a lot of games in a row, you, you've, you, your energy for me, sometimes when you do a lot of games and you're upstairs, is, you know, you maybe lack a little energy. And then going downstairs just gives it right back to you again. So there, I think there's a great mix. I think, I think we'll, we'll work on that mix and, and, uh, and see where it goes and whatever everybody thinks is the right thing. Panger, you've been working for national broadcasts, whether it's NBC, TNT, ESPN, TSN. What drives you to want to continue doing local broadcasts? And why is there still an appetite for you to want to, you know, continue to do that in your career? Yeah. Well, in all transparency, I wasn't sure that that it was something that I wanted to continue, to be honest with you. I mean, having, you know, the five grandkids at such a young age, um, you know, I was thinking maybe pulling back a little bit and um, I'll be honest with you, like Edzo's move probably wasn't good for everybody. And, you know, I, I understand that, but it's, a little, it's kind of inspiring too, that, you know, that he did that, um, kind of a similar thing that I did, uh, back in 09 and, and joined St. Louis. Um, but doing 31 or 32 games during the regular season, it's, it's, a um, an easier job. And, and, and my wife reminds me that like, you're, you love doing it. And so if you love doing it and there's something more out there and then you think you got, you know, more in you, then, you know, go do it. And, and, you know, the schedule itself, um, it's manageable. I proved that the last two years doing both. And, uh, and so that, I mean, that part of it, 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 that excites me. Now, listen, and number, a lot of people might think too, that, Hey, you took this job, they're, they're getting the number one overall pick. Well, no, these conversations were in advance, far in advance of, what pick the Blackhawks were going to get. And, and it wasn't going to be based on, on, on whoever they pick at number one. Um, it was, you know, something that we thought about for the long run and, 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 and kind of um, build with the, with the Blackhawks after such a great run and winning three cups to tougher times, to looking ahead to, to great times. And uh, that, that part of it, I'm, I'm excited to be a, you know, a part of that. So, um, so what makes me go? I don't know. Going to the rink gets me going to the rink, walking the hallways, talking to people, um, seeing familiar faces, talking to coaches. That's, that's, that's our job. And, and that's what I love doing. We all, it's also about telling stories, right? You've told so many stories over the years. And uh, it, what I love is you bring the human side to the ice. You let us know what a Patty Maroon is going through off the ice and, and how that impacts his play. And well, that's, that's just and, it. You're, you're right. And, and I guess my point is, once you found out that the number one pick, I know we were in advanced talks already, that had to excite you to be um, th 
the voice track, the soundtrack for what looks to be a generational player in Connor Bedard. Yeah, that I mean that's that's really really thrilling. I mean it, it just is, and I, you know, no matter what team, um, a generational player is on, I always enjoy doing those broadcasts. Um, I remember Alex Ovechkin's rookie year. He's in Washington. He scores the goal of all goals. It was right there in Arizona. Kurt Kilback and I did the game. And I remember thinking, this is unbelievable that we got to call this goal. And now I look back at it uh, how many years later, um, you know, what was that, 16, 17 years probably? And, and that, that soundtrack, that's, that, that call stays, you know, stays in the hockey world forever. And, and so I, I, I cherish those moments, to be honest with you, Pat, about just to, to just to, you know, to be with the, with the Blackhawks broadcast team and to be able to see the number one overall pick grow and mature. And that's, that is the funnest part that we do. And I'm, I, I look forward to it. I, I've gained some great friendships with players over the years and, and, uh, and, and, and if that ever stopped, I'd probably stop doing this job. And because that's what drives, it drives the engine to bring in a great broadcast is just having, knowing the family, knowing mom and dad, knowing their brothers and sisters, knowing, you know, they're all watching out there and, and you're a big part of, of, uh, of what's going on and, and how they're doing because you're telling that story. Last one for you, Panger, because I know you got a big game tonight yeah. and you got a tight schedule. How many holy jumpings can we expect on opening night? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. They just, they, they just come out, you know. That's one thing that didn't start in Chicago. I didn't have holy jumping ever in my, uh, my early years. And, that started with Steve Levy in a, a Philadelphia Flyers, New Jersey Devils game on ESPN. And um, they come out when it's absolutely outstanding and brilliant. And, uh, and that's, what I, that's what I love about that saying. It's, uh, anyway, I, I think there's going to be a whole bunch, there's for sure. Well, I got the opportunity to work with you at ESPN in the early 2000s before they lost the hockey contract. I am so stoked that you are a part of the Blackhawks broadcast team and the fan base – they already know you. That's the beauty of this thing. It's yeah. just, you know, this is just putting on a new pair of shoes for you. So we're excited about it. Continue to crush it with TNT. And uh, all the pro shops in the Chicagoland area have been warned that Darren Robert Pang is going to be back <laughs> in the Chicago area with his golf club soon. So they're standing by phones now waiting for your tea time. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, two o'clock. That'll be great. Thank you. I, I see, Panger. Wait. Thank you. Can't wait. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to getting together. See you on draft night. Huddle up because it's time to feel the power with points bet. With the points bet power hour, you can get boosted odds or bonus bets every single day. Whether you're into hoops or hockey, home runs or hole in ones, the power is in your hands. And now new customers will receive up to 1,000 second chance bets. That's 10 straight days of second chances where points bet will match your losing wager in bonus bets. All you got to do is download the points bet app today using the code shy talk 10 points bet your move. Great to talk to the newest member of the Chicago Blackhawks broadcast team, Darren Pang. Charlie, you are at the combine in Buffalo uh looks like you'll be talking to Connor Bedard on Friday. Yes, that is the case. I believe Connor Bedard, Adam Fantilli, and Leo Carlson will be speaking to the media on Friday. And then it's basically going to be a media. Uh, they're basically just going to trot all these other prospects out all day on Saturday. So it should be fun. Because the Blackhawks not only are obviously picking first overall, but they're also going to have that number 19 overall pick. So we'll kind of get to talk to some of these prospects that could be in that range. Um, so it'll be, it'll be fun to kind of put some faces to the names. And the biggest takeaway from your conversation today with Kyle Davidson is that they're open for business at, at pretty much everywhere in the draft, but especially at that number 19 spot, willing to move up, stay put or move down. Yeah, I think he, Kyle Davidson is keeping his options open. Now he says he's potentially open to trading back. I, I still think the preference would be to trade up, but um, you know, if the opportunity presents himself where they're looking at a few guys and all of them are falling uh, and they, they'll be able to kind of get one of those at least 
and get an additional pick, I think they'll definitely explore it. But yeah, it was it was a good, I think it was like 25 minute interview with Kyle Davidson. We appreciate his time here in Buffalo and um, nothing really earth shattering came from it, but it was a lot of just mini tidbits that was, you know, can be useful going into that June draft. Check out Charlie's work. Follow him on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, on the new uh, NBC Sports Chicago app that just has uh, yeah. embraced our, our presence. It has. I we, you can like pre you were able to pre download. I, I already pre ordered. Yeah. I'm 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 ready to go. I got a notification this morning saying it's ready. So I'm like, all right, let's, let's do this. Go. So it's it's a really solid app too. It's it's if I can say it's it's significantly better than the old one. All right. Our thanks to Panger for joining us as the the, the new broadcast voice of the Chicago Blackhawks. He'll be joining Chris Foster's next year. Uh, in the booth. That is going to do it for this edition of the Blackhawks Talk Podcast, sponsored by St. Xavier University. We'll catch you next time.